Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. Today we're gonna replace the oil pan on my Aprilia Tuono V41100RR. Now apparently the, the oil pan is easily crackable. I heard of people during the oil change cracking the, the oil pan when they over torque or even just torque properly the, the drain plug because of the, the way it's built inside, it seems to be pretty fragile. In my case, uh, I didn't over torque it. I actually hit a curb on the bottom of the bike and smashed it. So I gotta change this and I got myself a brand new oil pan. I got myself a brand new, apparently new style uh, gasket for it. And for good measure, for when I'm gonna need it, a whole bunch of uh, crash washers. So, we have a new part, we have a broken bike. Now for the chicha, let's get on it. Now the oil pan comes already with uh, the oil drain plug installed and in theory torque properly. It also comes with all the other components that are supposed to be on the oil pan and this is amazingly enough cheap. This was just 80 and some bucks. In comparison the gasket was $25 so the gasket is one third of this. First step in replacing the oil pan on the Aprilia is obvious. Uh, maybe it's not so obvious, but uh, you need to clean the new oil pan. The new oil pan is literally brand new. It looks super clean, but it's not quite as clean as it seems. There is dust in there, there are little particles. So I'm gonna clean these up and then I'm gonna remove, obviously, the oil that is in there. And for good measure, because, uh, well, we gotta replace the oil and it's always good to replace the oil filter as well, I'm gonna remove the oil filter. But rather than make you waste your time watching the oil drain off the bike, I'll catch you up in a minute when I'm done draining. Here we are. I removed uh, this from the bike and if you decided to do this job on your own, I'm assuming you can remove this on, on your own as well without me showing you how, it's just three screws. So I removed that, and now the most annoying part of the job has arrived. And the most annoying part of the job is removing the bottom of the exhaust. We're removing the bottom of the exhaust for two reasons. You cannot wiggle this thing out, even if it looks like you can because inside the oil pan in here there is a snorkel that comes down to fish the oil from the bottom so that snorkel will prevent me from sliding this whole thing out first thing on removing the exhaust we're gonna disconnect this gigantic can over here and that's a 13 millimeter or half inch depending what you're using There we go. Two hours later. All right, as you guys can see, there is a whole bunch going on. What did I do up to this point? Well, I ended up uh, pulling back uh, the silencer over here and then tilting it back uh, and hooking it up to the seat to get it out of the way. I ended up removing the springs from the back collector and from the side collector over there. I ended up uh, losing up uh, the, the oil radiator and pulling it down so I had enough access to get up and remove the bolts from the front collector and then I pulled down the pipe. Uh, I elected to keep the O2 sensors attached to the mid pipe over there and just move it out of the way because I didn't want to undo it all together. And uh, we're pretty much ready to remove the oil pan other than this hose over here. This is a crimp on uh, hose clamp, which we're gonna have to either cut 
or remove uh, somehow those are a pain but uh, this is about it let's uh, let's see how we can get rid of this thing easier than I thought if you have the right tool let's clamp this off and those is out there should be no more oil in there so we can get rid of this so now the the only thing left to do is to remove those eight millimeters all around the oil pan but for one allen key or allen bolt and the allen i'm talking about is this one over here i'm gonna start removing it uh, finger crossed because if it starts leaking uh, it's gonna be annoying All right, that was anticlimactic. By the way, I found out what that Allen key screw on the other side is, and it apparently is the uh, overpressure screw from the water pump. So problem solved, unless you had an overpressure, there should be nothing coming out of there. All right, we are down to the last uh, two screw. I have left one in the back and one up front front in the back I believe I got them all and in theory this thing should just come down and indeed it does and as you guys can see this is the snorkel I was talking about this is the piece that will prevent you from unscrewing it and sliding it sideways well, that and this piece of metal over here, there, but this one is short, so you can drop it that much. But that's why you have to remove uh, the, the exhaust system. I believe I could have kept this gasket because it seems to be in incredible shape. But, you know, better safe than sorry, because if it starts leaking from there, you got to do it all over again. It's not just the labor but it's also the oil that you're gonna waste so i might as well replace the gasket since i have it and call it good so this thing is pretty much ready to go and to be installed one thing i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna grab a little bit of oil and put it on uh, on the gasket it's not really required uh, the the manual says nothing about it but I always heard that you need to put a little bit of oil on the gaskets when they're new. This one being plastic though, I'm not really sure. And if it's not needed, hopefully this doesn't ruin anything. And if it does, leave a message down below and uh, the rest of you guys uh, that are doing this work, this job, are not gonna make the same mistake. As I always say, I'm not the greatest mechanic but you can use uh, my mistake so that you don't make them. There is only one way this gasket goes on the oil pan. The oil pan is not symmetrical, so there is no way you can put it upside down, backwards, or anything else. Uh, there is one way in and one way only. Oh, I'm kind of excited because, uh, because I really don't want to do this job ever again. Time to nut up or shut up, and I'm nutting up. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it up, and I'm gonna use this bolt uh, up front in the middle, and this bolt in the back to keep the gasket in place, and I'm gonna bring it up. Now, once you have all the screws in place, uh, there is only one other uh, screw that you need to put uh, on, and that is the one that holds the, the little fairing at the bottom. And this one goes down here at an angle. There we go. Just, just like anything else, I'm gonna keep it loose for now, and I'll tie it down at the very last minute because this one has a little bit of a little play and I wanna 
tie it and adjust it with the fairing on it. So I'm gonna leave it alone. All right, it's time to torque it. You really need to stay with me on this one because considering how delicate this oil pan is and considering that the, the tying procedure, it's a little different than many other bikes. You need to torque those screws at 12 newton meters. Once you torque them to 12 newton meters, you need to unscrew them and screw them back in at 12 newton meters. That's the procedure that's in the manual. And for an abundance of caution, I'm also gonna go in at a star pattern. I torque them, there are no cracks, uh, and everything seems to be okay. So let's move on and let's plug in this uh, oil cooler and with a brand new hose clamp. Put it in. All right. All right. And at this point, uh, let's put the exhaust back together. I'm gonna start with the mid pipe over here. Put it back up in there. Once I'm done with the mid pipe, I'm gonna put the front collector on it. And then I'm gonna conclude with the, the silencer on the other side. All right, the exhaust went in and it was 13 Newton meters for the four nuts uh, up top over there, uh, bolting the exhaust to the head. And then it's 20 Newton meters for the clamp over here. And it's 25 Newton meters when it comes to this uh, X key over here. So the exhaust is on, it's solid. It's time to put the oil radiator back where it belongs. So I'm going to nice and easily put it in place. There we go. We have this and it needs to go through there. And after it goes through, We'll put in the C clamp over here. There we go. Once it's through, it's time to put the little C clamp on it, which is not hard, just push it in. At this point, uh, I'm gonna put this through the bottom over here. And at this point, if you remove the oil filter as well, it might be a good idea to put it back right now. Filter of choice, uh, this time around I went with the KNN. Before you put it on, remember to put a bit of oil right on the gasket. That will let the gasket slide on the surface, on the engine, rather than create friction. So you can tie it good. All right, so everything is back where it's supposed to be. I put fresh oil in it. It took about four quarters and 250 milliliters. I ran the bike a little bit, not too much. I just wanted to make sure there is not a gush of oil coming out as soon as you turn it on. And also I wanted to make sure that there is no evident leak on the exhaust system that I just took out. And everything seems to be fine. I couldn't hear any leaks or anything. So I'm gonna put this back on and I'm done with, uh, with the job. If you like the video, like. If you love the video, subscribe. Get yourself one of those headlight uh, uh, shirt. Support me on Patreon. If you get any value out of my video, check the description down below. There's gonna be a link for my new Patreon page and there's gonna be links for everything I used in this video, including the part numbers for the gasket and the new oil pan. So check the description, work on your bikes, and I'll see you next time. Easier than I thought, if you have the right tool. Oopsie.
Now this bike looks exceptionally clean. Uh, and now this bike looks exceptionally good and clean under. Now this bike look Now this bike looks exceptionally good and clean, which is uh, 25 uh, millimeters or something like that. 